senior prom is a milestone that every high schooler looks forward to. It is the summation of all our high school events in a single night. It is the celebration of the end of high school, the last chance to be mischievous and daring with your friends, and it is romantic and beautiful pictures of girls in gowns and boys in tuxes. It is a special night, but like Carrie, sometimes it is a chilling nightmare. In the fall of my senior year, I had an extremely toxic boyfriend named Eddie. He was verbally abusive, demeaning, and offensive. His friends were precisely like him. How he became my boyfriend is a long story, but just say he was that bad boy who gave me a lot of attention that I desperately needed at that time. I finally gained my confidence, and I recognized I needed a better relationship. I was lucky I had a great teacher who guided me. It wasn't long before I met a great guy in my science class named Michael. He was thoughtful and very helpful to me with the assignments. He was a great motivator, always telling me I could be the best in the class. He was caring, always asked if I needed any study tips, and was complimentary of my ideas. I really liked him. He was the complete opposite of Eddie. As the senior prom approached, I worked up the nerve to ask Michael if he would be my date. I know that was bold. He said he planned to ask me but was happy I took the initiative. Prom was on Saturday. The gymnasium had been beautifully decorated and resembled more of a wedding hall than a basketball court. Decorated tables with colorful balloons and ribbons with stars falling from the ceiling. Colored lights and disco balls made the room sparkle like a magical garden. It was beautiful and romantic. We danced to a local band which was so much fun. After several hours, Michael and I were hot and sweaty from dancing, so we snuck out to the football bleachers to cool under the stars and have a little alone time together. We were leaning back, gazing at the night sky, when we were startled by a gang noisily shouting on the football field. They wore scary masks, shouting at us, calling us prom poodles and barking like dogs. My eyes went blurry with fright as the blood left my head, but I still could recognize Eddie under the mask, and I knew that offensive tone in his voice. They blocked our exit from the bleachers, and Michael stood in front of me, saying leave us alone. We aren't bothering you. Michael put up a defense, but the gang was hyped up for trouble, and they dragged him to the ground, pounding him with their fists. I screamed at the top of my lungs, help! Teachers and students outside by the back gymnasium door heard my cries and ran to the football field. As I screamed, the boy I knew was Eddie slapped me across my face so hard, I saw stars and collapsed to the ground. Michael was bleeding from his nose and mouth, still fighting, when the group of rescuers entered the field. Eddie and his gang saw them enter and scrambled off the field barking like dogs. The police arrived moments later, and as they were taking my statement, my cell phone buzzed with a message. It was Eddie, bark bark, with a selfie with his gang wearing those awful masks and an emoji of a skull and crossbones. I showed the police officer. It was enough with evidence and my testimony to have that stupid fool arrested. He was subsequently expelled from school for the rest of the year. It wasn't the prom memories I wanted but it did bond Michael and me happily ever after. I was a high school senior in the spring of 2020. I was looking forward to graduating and attending Brown University after the summer. I was focused on the future in academics, and my friends said I was missing out on the best part of high school. So they twisted my arm to go to the senior prom. They fixed me up with a girl named Mary Jane, whom everyone just called MJ. MJ was an athlete who starred on all the girls' sports teams. We knew each other, but that was about it. Both of us had been strong-armed into going to prom. We were both okay with it, and were all going as a group anyway, so it would be a fun night. For the first part of the dance, we sat at the table and chatted, listening to the music and watching our friends dance. We had laughs and talked about our plans for college, and of course, sports. When the night was about half over, our friends came to our table and dragged us to the dance floor. We danced for about 15 minutes when MJ got a text message on her phone that she had stashed in a small handbag. She excused herself and went to the ladies' room for privacy and to be able to hear, I guess. I stayed and danced with our group and just mashed to the band. I don't know how long it was, but MJ had yet to return and the fire alarm sounded. It rang loudly and the band stopped playing and the lead said, please, everyone stay calm and exits the building. Well, it was a madhouse as everyone ran for the exits. People were trampling and pushing. All four exits were like squeezing toothpaste from a tube. I don't know why there was such panic, as there was no precursor to the alarm. I hung back because I wanted to ensure MJ got out safe, and she had yet to return from the ladies' room. 
She was my date, and I did feel responsible for her safety, even though I knew she could take care of herself. Her dress was a warm golden yellow, and she was tall, so I thought I'd see her in the mob scene. I quickly ran to the ladies room and called her name, and upon hearing no reply, I decided she must have made it outside safely. So I made my way to the exit. I was among the last in the building, and something didn't make sense. There wasn't any smoke, and I smelled nothing weird, so I double checked to ensure she wasn't trapped in the building somewhere. By now I was sure the alarm was just a prank and a false alarm. I ran back towards the ladies room and was glad I did. As I rounded a hall corner, I saw MJ pinned to the wall by a monster of a man. He had one giant hand around MJ's neck with just her toes touching the floor. I sprinted at the guy and hit him with all my body weight. It took him by surprise, and he fell backward, releasing MJ who gasped for air. Before I could regain my footing, the creep grabbed my leg and pulled me to the ground beside him. I was looking eye to his bloodshot eyes. His eyes were lightning bolts of red lines with huge black pupils. I remember his grin as if he was getting great satisfaction that I had attacked him. He gripped my neck in a vice grip when MJ punched him in his throat with a maneuver she had learned in martial arts that he didn't see coming. Together we ran for the door, but before we could exit, the fire department entered. We yelled to them that there was a man who had assaulted us down the hall and that he was unconscious now. They radioed for the police to enter and held their position. When the police entered, they proceeded cautiously, not knowing if the man was armed. No one was there when they got to where we said we had left him. I described that man as best that I could. I told them I had never seen him before, and he did not look like a student. MJ concurred, and she had no idea who he was either. She said when the alarm sounded, she left the ladies room and was pulled into a classroom, where she struggled with the man escaping to the hall, where he grabbed her again and where I tackled him. We don't think he was after MJ in particular, she just happened to be near where he was hiding in wait for an unsuspecting student. It has been several years, and the man has yet to be found or identified. It was never determined who pulled the fire alarm, if it was a student or the attacker. But as long as I live, the chilling nightmare of prom night will never leave me. This story happened to me four years ago when I was a senior in high school. You'd probably laugh if I told you high school was a scary ride, but my prom night drive was a chilling nightmare. Like most high schools, the senior prom is a big spring event. Weeks before, everyone is talking about plans for prom night. What to wear, will there be an after party, should we get a limo, and the enthralling question, who will you go with? I had a pretty good idea who would ask me, even though we weren't girlfriend and boyfriend. We were just good friends. His name was Mark, and we hung around a lot together at school. We had a very similar class schedule, and our study hall was at the same time. We had spoken about prom and were both anticipating prom night, but he still had yet to ask me. So two weeks before prom weekend, another guy at school asked if I would go as his date. His name was Jason. Our school is big, with over 200 students in our senior class. So I recognized Jason by name, but I really didn't know him. We passed in the hall, and I had seen him in the cafeteria and places like that, but we never had a conversation. Maybe a hello in passing, but that is it. I had nothing against him, but I knew his reputation from locker room talk that he was a troublemaker. He had been suspended from school for vandalism several times, and a bloody fight sophomore year that he apparently instigated. I didn't have any classes with him when he stopped me in the hallway out of the blue, and asked if I would go to the prom with him. It was strangely unnatural and stiff and it put me in an awkward position to have to say no. I felt terrible for him, thanked him for the invitation, and explained that I was expecting someone else to ask me who I had already agreed to go with. Jason just looked at me and said, is that really true? I said yes it was, and again thank you for the invitation. Jason turned without saying anything and continued down the hallway. Later that afternoon in study hall, Mark asked me with a special card if I would dance with him at prom and be his prom date. The following two weeks passed fast in preparation for prom. Dress, makeup, shoes, and a boutonnier for Mark. I didn't see Jason at all during those weeks leading up to the dance. Then came Dancing Under the Stars. It was an excellent theme for prom night. The gym was decorated with thousands of glittering stars suspended from the ceiling, and lights splashed over them, making them sparkle and shine. It was magical. Mark picked me up, and my dad took a ton of pictures of us. Then Mark drove us to the gala in his father's car. 
When we arrived at the Space Odyssey in the gym, we gathered with our friends and took a thousand pictures. As the band played, I was having a blast. I was dancing and laughing so much I could hardly stay on my feet and leaned up against the wall to take a breath. That is when I saw Jason across the dance floor against the other wall. He didn't appear to be with anyone and wasn't dressed in a tux, just wearing a long sleeve t-shirt and jeans. When I saw him, he was already looking over at me. I gave him a smile, immediately looked away, and tried to avoid eye contact with him for the rest of the dance. The band played the time of my life as the last dance at midnight, and we headed out to our cars. Mark opened the car door for me, and I got in, and he shut the door and walked around as a true gentleman to drive me home. I waved to friends and shouted goodnight as we pulled out of the parking space. But to my horror, it wasn't Mark driving when I turned to Mark. Jason was in the driver's seat. Mark pounded on the driver's window a second later as Jason pulled out and stepped on the gas. The Buick raced out of the parking lot, forcing prom goers to dodge the outgoing car. I was sure Jason was going to kill someone with his recklessness. I shouted at Jason what was he doing. He looked over at me and gave an evil leering grin. I shouted as I dialed 911. If you don't stop this car and let me out, I'm calling the police. He looked at me and sneered, go ahead, see what I care. When the emergency operator picked up on the second ring, I cried, help me. Jason slapped me across the face, and my phone fell between the seats. The car swerved simultaneously, tearing up the gravel on the side of the road. I pressed my body against the door to get as far away from him as possible, and he hit the gas, pushing the car at a terrifying speed. I was petrified, and my left eye was watering and swelling from the hit. We careened down the state route for seven miles, not stopping at any lights and passing cars with a blaring horn blast, narrowly escaping sideswiping them. Then the right front tire blew and shredded. The car swerved and ran off the road and through a hedge. Jason hit the windshield, not wearing a seatbelt. Seconds later, blue lights and screeching tires pulled up behind us. I opened my door and ran to an officer while two other officers dragged Jason bleeding from his forehead and handcuffed him. When I saw Mark, he told me Jason had jumped him when walking around the car and taken the keys from his hand. He had a bandage around his head from a paramedic that treated him at the scene. It was a frightening end to a senior prom.